Vidyu Jambal is an actor I've rooted for ever since his Hindi film debut in Force, an actor who proved his acting chops in a negative role, some would argue even stole the show. I still defend Jambal the actor as he is often dismissed by various media outlets as just an action star. Quite on the contrary, I feel that he is one of the few people who stands out beyond his physical ability and strengths as a martial artist. While one always complained and justifiably so about the faltering screenplay in most of his solo lead action films, Jambal still had the ability to make an impression as an actor when he played an antagonist opposite Vijay and in the recent Khuda of his franchise, where he made it clear that he isn't a one-trick pony. With his production company Action Hero Films, Jambal actively seeks for creators who have made a mark with their films but are often getting unnoticed by the industry. Shocked at the very fact that Sankalp Reddy did not get offers from the Hindi film industry after showcasing such a stellar debut with his bilingual film Ghazi Attack, collaborating with him in IB71, this seemed to be an attempt by Jambal to showcase a no-nonsense, adrenaline-pumping and slick action film with talented creators, and I was all in for it. The film focuses on the restless nature with which Pakistan were planning their next attack and the mission executed by the Indian Intelligence Bureau in 1971, where they curtailed planned attacks from Pakistan that were backed by China by blocking the airspace as the plan of West Pakistan was to send artillery and guns to East Pakistan so that they can weaken the Northeast hold of India. The creative ways in which the Intelligence Bureau duped the threats of their enemies by executing a fake hijack situation so that it can be declared as an act of war and then legally they can block the airspace forms the basic storyline of IB-71. All of this, of course, led by Dev Jamwal, played by Vidyut. That was anything but basic when you think about this complicated mission, but I tried my best to summarize it. Here's me telling you the good and bad aspects of the film so that you guys can ultimately decide whether to watch IB-71 in theatres or not. Devoid of thrill and emotional fervor. There are many examples of espionage thrillers that have not only engaged us emotionally but has generated a nationalistic sentiment within us. When I think of films that utilize an understated approach which is diametrically opposite to the Masi YRF spy universe, I think of films like Razi and Baby. And when I think about the best film that focuses on a mission overseas led by one man, I think of Airlift. These films shook us on the possibility that one could get caught, presented action set pieces that engaged us, had moments of dialogue bazi where one could hoot and cheer to, and eventually transcended to be about the unified love that one has for the nation. Sadly, IB-71 is devoid of not only thrill but emotional fervor as well. It all has to do with the mundane storytelling of this film. The screenplay written by a team of six people just seems to jump from one newspaper cutting to the other, lacking any form of depth that makes you immediately text your friend and recommend it to them. The catalyst to motivate audiences, as someone wisely said, is great content, not just good. And one cannot just defend a film that does not rile up any distinct emotion or feeling. The impact of real locations and transportation to the 70s. One of the biggest gripes that I have with the advancement of technology and the dependence that creators have on studio-produced backdrops is that one never feels like they have been transported to real locations. This takes away from the immersive experience, especially when films are aimed at highlighting a specific period of time in Indian history. IB-71 thankfully strays away from the tropes that exist today, and several of its set pieces are shot in real locations, especially Kashmir, where Dave gets intel across 8 days. Having shot in Kashmir during the winters, every frame is snow-clad. You've got the mesmerizing towering houses, the twisted lanes, and an action set piece even on a shikara in Dal Lake. This is one of the main reasons why I had fallen in love with Vidyut's Kodafis too. Because the choreography that was set in the narrow lanes of UP really extracted such a visceral and impactful moment. What becomes essential even for a film like this set in the 70s is that the characters look, feel and act the part of that era. And I have to say that the costume and art department has got everything on lock. The styling of the characters by Divya Gambhir and the technology utilized by the agencies in order to extract information to even the arsenal utilized by the agents, it's so reflective of the 70s that it gave me slight glimpses of the man from Uncle with Henry Cavill, at least visually. Dialogues and laughable portrayal of Pakistani officials and agents. The very first frame that presents a Pakistani official showcases him snoring while receiving a very important package from the Chinese. I knew instantly the ride we will be on, where the Pakistani intelligence agents and police force are just going to be a bunch of laughable, dim-witted stereotypes and nothing else. Vidyut becomes familiar with the Pakistani soldier, seeing him sing a song of Asha Bhosle, telling him if he has love for Asha and Lata, how will he develop hatred for Indra? 
the urdu dialogues reach a point of overkill where the janabs and the tashreefs just don't end like sitting in a mehfil rather than a covert mission after being told that the mission is too risky with you in order to get his mission greenlit sites ramayan and maharana pratap against the mughals as great examples of belief and the mission instantly gets approved i felt for an actor like vishal jetwa in this film who plays an emotionally charged and straight up dumb extremist willing to fight for the cause but not having any plan in his head his hijacking sequence and how ultimately they develop the character becomes unintentionally funny as he is simply naive and gets heckled at by officials on both sides the indian intelligence agents do a better job at mimicry than pehchan kon from the great indian laughter challenge and this context can only be understood when you see the film a dialogue that ends by saying hum unhe nanga karenge is followed by agents changing their clothes to pose as pakistani agents it's too on the nose and becomes laughable to say the least the vidyut jambal led movie problems what is a consistent trait that happens with especially vidyut jambal led films is that it boasts of exceptional set pieces and moments it also builds up beautifully for the second half but it always seems to crumble from a screenplay perspective This has happened in Commando 3 with the over the top nationalistic fervor that seemed forced. This has happened in Khuda Hafiz 2 where the film for no reason shifts to Egypt. But the best part about IB71 and what is its weakest quality also is its 1 hour and 57 minute running time barely has any time for immersive storytelling. Sankalp Reddy as a storyteller where the mission at hand has so many moving elements only focuses on that in autopilot mode. The intellectual capability and personality of Vidyu Jambal is never explored an emotional connection with the mission at hand is never felt and one just feels that this is not a commercial espionage thriller like Razi or Baby that gave us both thrilling edge of the seat moments as well as nationalistic pride but this more or less joins the category of Mission Majnu or Bell Bottom where one gets a glimpse of what agents pulled off but nothing more joining the status of becoming films that will be forgotten very soon Vidyu doesn't falter in the performance but it's the writing that really lets him down making him come across like any other agent rather than a person we can emotionally root for Vidyut's actions are more of wits than his physical prowess but even when hand to hand combat commences in this movie it's poorly choreographed and executed marred with jump cuts even in a corridor sequence that had so much potential only being lit with torch lights it's just presented with random blows that offer nothing from an action standpoint Vidyut's vision and what he needs to change. There is a silent movement that picked up a few years ago and is going in full swing recently and it is the case of actors in the Hindi film industry turning producers to not only give opportunities to real talent but to tell interesting and unique stories. Anushka Sharma has done it ever since NH10, Priyanka Chopra with The Sky is Pink, Alia Bhatt with Darlings, Tapsi Pannu with her Outsider Studio, Kangana Ranaut with Emergency and her digital releases. All the actors are trying to establish their own hermit kingdom in in an industry which was ruled mainly by dynasty families and Vidyut also joins the party with this film being his maiden production and i feel like it is really admirable and encouraging as a film viewer to see actors put their money where their mouth is and attempt to back interesting and compelling stories while ib71 i think really is a misfire in attracting audiences because it's just mundane storytelling that lets it down i hope vidyut does not create an echo chamber where he forgets to collaborate with other companies as well because while i root for him as a leading hero it is in the collaborative processes with other talents that he will really thrive IB71 is history repeating itself with vidyut led films the effort is always there but the writing always falters and that was a video guys write down in the comments below what you thought about IB71 please don't forget to follow me on instagram the handle is right in front of you follow me at jammy pants4 also please support us by smashing the like button and subscribing to our channel for weekly content ahead thank you for watching